Hi, my name is Brandon Rotondo. I'm with Devin McKenzie's group here at the uh, University of Washington, and today I'll be walking you through the Solar X3 FOM roll-to-roll uh, -roll printer. So the main goal of this roll-to-roll uh, -roll printer is for us to be able to do flexible roll-to-roll -roll, uh, processing of solar cells. Uh, the benefit of a roll-to-roll -roll solar cell is that uh, being able to be printed on plastic, you're now making a much lighter weight material um, that can be easily installed, easily mounted onto roofs, um, or because it's flexible, it can be placed onto many other surfaces. Uh, you can create semi-transparent uh, solar cells, which allows you to collect light and, and at the same time also let some light through, um, which allows for uses in such as architectural windows where you still want to have light coming through to your room, uh, but at the same time you could be harvesting energy to power uh, low power electronics at the same time. So what we're printing here is a solar cell uh, module. Uh, and in order to do that, what we do is we print uh, multiple layers. Uh, so to start, we need a top electrode, um, in which case you can either use a transparent conductor or a printed silver grid, uh, which will be done on something like the print station we have uh, at the beginning of the roll. Uh, after that, we need to put down a, a electron or hole transport layer uh, to add directionality to your absorber so your, uh, your carries don't recombine and you get efficient extraction. Uh, after that, we would be printing our active material, uh, which we would be doing with the slot die coder. You could use organic uh, polymers, uh, organic dyes, or perovskite-based uh, uh, active materials. After that, you would need to put down another uh, transport layer, uh, either a hole or electron once again, um, just whatever transport layer was not placed down beforehand. And that would be finally uh, topped with a back electrode of silver um, to allow for maximum extraction of your cell uh, without any concerns about uh, blocking the light that's needed with the silver grid or transparent conductor uh, on the front electrode. We start with a initial PET roll. Uh, this can be treated with either a transparent conductive oxide or um, be run as just plain substrate, uh, depending on your application. Uh, the first step that we have to go through is rolling it and cleaning it to prepare the substrate for printing. So the first step is a static uh, cleaner. Uh, we are discharging any static electricity and then using a rubber roller to pull off any particulates. Uh, the roll then travels through uh, down to the Verona plasma treatment uh, to both clean the substrate and modify the surface energy to uh, assist in printing. After the Corona plasma treatment, we're ready for our first printing step. So the uh, film will pass through up and into the first print station. Uh, the print station we have here is a screen printing station. Uh, with this, you can put down patterned films, uh, patterned electrode contacts. Uh, allowing you to set up individual cells along your roll. Uh, one primary printing mechanism that we use is rotary screen printing, uh, which is very similar to silk screen printing that you use in applications such as printing t-shirts. Uh, what this allows us to do is print high viscosity inks uh, in fairly thick layers. We will use that for printing back electrodes of silver, um, where we want thick layers of highly conductive metal, uh, and we want to be able to put down thick layers quickly. If we were to do the same process with something such as slot die coating, it would take up to 10 passes to get the thickness we can get in a single uh, screen printing pass. After printing, you need to dry and anneal your films. Uh, so we move into our first oven. Uh, this is a 12 meter oven, uh, allowing for um, residence times uh, anywhere from 30 seconds up to 10 minutes. Um, let's see and we can run it from anywhere from uh, 50 to 150 degrees Celsius. So in this oven, we take a multi-pass cycle through a spiral pattern uh, to optimize oven resonance time, uh, as well as allow the film to maintain uh, a upright uh, position during the initial pass to um, prevent any runoff of your film. Coming out of the first oven, you can either run to a splicing table and roll up your roll as if you're done with your printing step, or we can move on to a second printing layer. 
Um, in this case, we move on to a slot die deposition uh, setup, uh, which uh, can be seen here. Uh, so the roll will go through the oven, uh, through a few rollers to maintain tension and speed. Uh, once again, we have a static discharge here available if need be. Um, so in order to put down uh, continuous films, uh, we use a technique called slot die coating, uh, in which a continuous curtain of film is deposited onto your moving substrate, uh, allowing for uniform uh, thin strips to be uh, printed. Uh, the head that we have connected right now is a 13 millimeter stripe head, uh, but we can do anywhere from 10 millimeters up to the full 300 millimeter substrate uh, width. In order to slot die coat uh, layers, we use a slot die head along with a syringe pump to so where we can put down a very controlled uh, rate of deposition uh, in order to determine our film thickness. Uh, if you look at the rate of the uh, web moving through the printer uh, versus the rate at which you're printing material, you can determine your film thickness. Um, and uh, depending on your height parameters of your slot tie head to the uh, web uh, substrate, you uh, can determine uh, factors such as wetting or meniscus formation, which allows for printing of different viscosity materials. Uh, so once again, after printing in a slot die coating system, we uh, need to dry and anneal our films. So we pass through a second 12 meter oven uh, following the same spiral path, uh, allowing for maximum residence time uh, in this setup. Uh, with a lot of solar materials, uh, your anneal time is highly dependent, uh, your efficiency is highly dependent on annealing time. And uh, so we're trying to ensure the maximum amount of annealing uh, per oven length. Uh, once our film is passed through the oven, the uh, film comes out and through uh, where we can now pass through a lamination station if we do have sensitive materials uh, to protect it against factors such as UV light, uh, water, or oxygen. Um, and the way that we do that is we will load a barrier film uh, onto a roll here will then be pressed against your coated device uh, to, and then uh, be spooled off uh, excess uh, tape material uh, and your final device that is now encapsulated will pass down through and be rolled up as a final roll in your roll-to-roll -roll system. So here's an example of a front electrode setup uh, used in a roll-to-roll -roll setting. Uh, what we have here is printed silver in addition to a flexographically printed uh, transport layer. In this case, it's a highly conductive PDOT-based uh, uh, transport layer. Uh, what, this is what this allows is a transparent conductive layer in which you can uh, extract carriers and charges without uh, blocking uh, a large amount of the sunlight. In a printed device, what we'll have is uh, single cells in a area defined by your electrode uh, geometry. And then you can see uh, connected along the outside, each cell is uh, connected together in series, uh, allowing for a high voltage uh, module to be created very rapidly.